Did I turn it on? Can you hear us? You have a mouse over there? Yeah, that's oh, sure. Okay. Praise God. How's everybody doing tonight? We're back again. Pastor Joel and Annalisa Jones, along with the uh, Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide Zoom crew. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And uh, again, we are back with our walk through the Bible or walking through the Bible, whichever way you want to phrase it. That's what we're trying to do. And uh, uh, <clears throat> this is where we are seeking to go further into the Word of God. And um, 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 as led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, as I was saying uh, the other day, it's always our goal to visit each book of the Bible. I think I need to clarify that because lately there's been a little bit of a, a misunderstanding about what we're doing. We've been at this for quite a while, and as you all know, we're trying to go through each book of the Bible as led by the Holy Spirit. But this is not a comprehensive Bible study where you go through every word and dissect every uh, verse. We don't have that kind of time to go through all the history. So we do drop in to each book as led by the Holy Spirit, but we believe that the Bible overlaps. And so if we miss it one place, we'll come back and catch it on the next go around. Sort of when, like when you drop somebody off at the mall and you say, I'll be back through on the way back, be ready. So that's sort of how it works. And uh, so I want you all to understand that because lately uh, we've heard from uh, um, that there have been some misunderstanding. So I just want you all to know that each one of us, as children of God, we go through this Bible over and over again, and we'll continue to do that till we leave here, amen? amen. Till God calls us home or till Jesus comes. So we are prepared and we are um, each responsible for our own salvation. So we go through that Bible at home and we try to go through it uh, the object of the class is to go through this Bible and read it at home. And then when you get uh, in the class, we dissect what the Lord has us dissect. And we did something that we've never done. Well, we did it once before, where we combined a couple of uh, Gospels, Mark and Luke, because we spent so much time in, in uh, Matthew. And if you know your Bible, you know a lot of that overlaps. So um, some people uh, didn't understand that, but that's why uh, it's important to, to listen when we give the uh, 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 instructions to read through it at home. And then when we come to uh, the class, we will uh, expound on it as led by the Holy Spirit. And this time, what we were going to expound on has been going over and over. And we'll still go through it, but sometimes we may not hit it that night, but God will certainly cover it. So I hope that explains, because I want everybody to be, to understand and us be on one accord, that we are uh, going to continue to seek to apply the word so that we can grow in our uh, faith in Christ and be used the way God wants us to be used as a unit that starts at home, and then it ends up in congregation. So we try to remember that. And uh, I think uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal those things as time goes by. So what I want to do tonight is uh, uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then I'll introduce uh, Danielle to you. Father, we thank you again tonight for everything that you're doing. As always, Lord, we give you all the praise glory and honor and we thank you again for allowing us to just come to you father and uh, uh, learn again another opportunity to gather and to study your word Lord God as you have prescribed it for us at this time so we thank you for being present with us Lord and we ask you to give us everything we need continue to guide us as always quicken us Lord sharpen those who need the understanding Lord that you may be able to enrich us as you would have us to be these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, uh, Sister Danielle, I'm going to, she's going to tell you all what you need to do uh, for our Facebook viewers and everyone else. Uh, Sister Danielle, would you help me on that? Put Good evening, up. everyone. Amen. We welcome you to walk through the Bible with us. For those on Facebook, this is an interactive Bible study and it's being live streamed. 
If, if you have questions or comments pertaining to tonight's study, please feel free to type them in the comments field and I will relay them to Pastor Joel. Please only ask questions or make comments that pertain to tonight's Bible study. Also, if you wish to contact Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide, please feel free to do so on our website, by email, or by phone. The contact information will be located in the comment section as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Danielle. All right. Uh, thank you, Lord, for sending me good people to help out. I thank mm -hmm. you for that, as always. So, um, just a little adjustment here. Okay. So, um, all right, we're going to be continuing in the book of John. You all know we were in John, and we're still in the book of John. As I said, we're going to move to chapter 3. Uh, so I trust that you all should have read chapter 2 at home in your private time, which we, uh, we have to continue to do, is read through the chapters as always. So uh, <clears throat> let's see what we need to apply in uh, chapter 3. So I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa, would you start us off there, Pastor, reading from verse 1 to verse 17 of chapter 3 in the book of John, please. Verse 1, 1, 2, how many, what, what, where am I going? Okay, let's try it again. Chapter 3, 1 through what? <laughs> 17. 1 through 17, okay. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how would you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting, God, everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, let's go to the top and let's see. Um, we have Nicodemus. And uh, Nicodemus, who was what? What was Nicodemus? He was a Jew, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. Pharisee. What else was he? Teacher. He was a Pharisee, right? Mm -hmm. He was a Pharisee. And uh, also, he said to be a member of the Sanhedrin. 
you all know what the Sanhedrin is. In your studies, you probably heard about the Sanhedrin somewhere along the line. It was a 70-man court, and they came up with laws and different things. Uh, he was one of those. So he was basically Nicodemus was seen not only as a as a priest, but he was seen as a professor, mm -hmm. and like a lot of people today, he was a politician, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He was all those things in one, right? Mm -hmm. The three P's, let's say. Professor, politician, and priest. What, uh, uh, what a combination, amen. Eh? <laughs> so Made up the, uh, making up the laws. Making up the laws, and what do we know about um, Pharisees? What, what do we know about their character? The character of, the, of most Pharisees, they they appeared to be very pious, right? Mm -hmm. They were um, um, were they legalistic. Huh? Yeah, they were. Yeah. What else? They had extreme, sometimes very extreme moral views, right? They were thought to be scholars and different things like that. A stickler that. of traditions mm -hmm. and laws. Mm -hmm. They were also well educated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And we have people like that today. They're very educated. Know the word, know certain things, but there was something missing, and there was something missing in Pharisees, okay? So this man, but this man, Nicodemus, um, he should have been, by all purposes and all accounts, he should have been very uppity and unreachable, right, and things mm -hmm. like that. But what do we see? He, he was also, like I said, not just a Pharisee, but he was... In the Sanhedrin, and uh, to get there, then you were you were definitely locked into that whole uh, Pharisee type of mentality. But we see something going on here, right? Mm -hmm. In verse two, what do we see going on? Somebody tell me. See if you all on top of this. No, nobody. Well, okay. Brother um, Terry's going to Brother Terry, answer. come on, Brother Terry. Tell me what's happening, brother. Yeah, he says it right there. He says, we know that you are a teacher come from God. There you go. There you and go. And not very many of them Pharisees ever said that. Amen. Amen. He came. <laughs> Did somebody else say something? Oh. And, uh, and, also, and also at the time that the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had everything against Jesus. So here he is um, uh, appearing to Jesus at night. So that tells me right there that he's sneaking around and does not want to be noticed by the Pharisees or Sadducees or people of the Sanhedrin uh, council. Didn't want them to know that he was talking to Jesus by night. Okay, uh, all right, maybe, yeah, I guess that, that could be a reason he's out, he might be, you sure he's not just stretching an awful night's walk and ran into him, but okay, whatever he's, it might be, but we know that he, that he's talking to Jesus, and how does he address him? Teacher. Rabbi, right, so I read Minister Dora's lips just now, I couldn't hear her, but she said, and that's what he did, he, he, he uh, addresses him as rabbi and that's important because mm -hmm. he um he recognized him as rabbi which in the hebrew means uh my master my teacher that's what the that word rabbi means in the hebrew the uh translations so we see now that um he recognized jesus and he recognized something else Somebody said it earlier, Brother Terry. He recognized the divine origin of Jesus' power, mm -hmm. you see? And that's important. That's, that's an important factor. That's a plus, okay? He says right there in verse 3, uh, I'm sorry, verse 2, uh, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes on to say, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And you know what else? The, the, the assembly, the Sanhedrin, they were just like where, Pete, where um, Paul came from, learned from. He learned from the Sanhedrin. Uh, they were assembly of councils uh, known as rabbis. So he recognized Jesus as 
someone of importance because they were someone of importance. Mm -hmm. He wasn't ready to do, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to, to kill him like the other Pharisees and, and Sadducees. So he recognized him as someone uh, of that stature as well. And was Nicodemus saved? Saved? What do you mean saved? Was he saved? Did he, did he, did he know the Lord? Yeah, he knew God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead, Brother Terry. Name is the door. I see here. Well, it says if we believe that we are saved, and I think he believed. I don't think he had a lot of faith, but because he was like Pastor and Lisa said, he was sneaking around at night. Mm -hmm. He believed. But his faith wasn't really strong, or he would just be out mm -hmm. in the daytime and, and doing it. I think that he his faith was building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sister uh, Mansador, did I see you? Yeah, I, I think he had heard of Jesus. Obvious that he had been watching him or hearing other people because he says he knew about all the miracles mm -hmm. and he was curious mm -hmm. but he came to him mm -hmm. he wanted to know about him but at that particular moment i don't think he had committed himself to jesus exactly mm -hmm. exactly he was close he was he was certainly he was workable wasn't he he was certainly uh willing i would say amen mm -hmm. brother dave go ahead he at least was asking questions i'm sorry he was at, he was at least asking questions he was at that point in time uh, trying to take and draw, uh, figure out where what he needed to deal with, and he he he, he understood his majesty that he had to come from God, and he understood that, but he was still confused Amen. by his manhood. Rather, you know, he thought God would be God, mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. you know, and everything. He was still confused by the manhood of him. Mm -hmm. that incarnate nature. Mm -hmm. of Jesus walking in the flesh of a man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, Pastor. And, and like everybody's saying, he was curious, but we know from Scripture that Jesus himself said, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. And here I see the Father drawing Nicodemus because of all the Pharisees and Sadducees of that council. Nicodemus was the one that came to him at night, so the Father was drawing him to, 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 to Jesus, the Son. All right, and we see that uh, Jesus, and that tells you something about uh, Jesus' deity, that he can draw people. He can draw the hard-hearted. He can draw people that should have been hardliners, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But because of the work that the Lord was doing in Jesus Christ, the miracles um, and different things like that, we see a man who should have been on the opposite end that is being drawn to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I will submit that... Um, if people see the light of Christ in us today, that you can draw some people, okay? Just like the scripture says, uh, um, yeah, when you please the Lord, you make even your enemies to be at peace with you. You sometimes draw them into you, amen? Because they see that, um, they see your testimony. They see that God is in you. That's like the lady who, uh, uh, Pastor Verna Brown, the testimony she gives about the hitman that came to do her in when she left the uh, the drug trade, and uh, they they wanted to see if she was really this Christian. And when they saw her, they were just cut. They just kind of put their arms down and said, "Well, we're gonna leave you alone, and you leave us alone, but pray for us," <laughs> you know. That's a huge testimony about what God will do when you're walking with him and how he, well, you don't fear, you walk with the Lord and you do as he tells you to do and he goes before you and he's your rear guard. So he will turn things for his good. We've heard that before, right? So we're seeing how this, uh, another example of this. And as we get into the book of John, uh, um, you'll see where Nicodemus, we get into chapter 7 around that area, I think it is, in verses 50 and 51. You'll see where, we're, where Nicodemus actually comes to the aid of Jesus Christ, you know, uh, in, in those verses. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I, uh, in verse, as we go to John chapter 7. Pastor, you get this verse 50 and 51, but it's not. Talking about John 7? Mm -hmm. 
chapter 7. Let me see, where was that? 51. No, I'm the living bread. That's the one I want. Don't worry about it. I, I lost it. But anyway, there's a scripture in there where he, there are two verses where he uh, defends Jesus uh, in front of the other Pharisees. That's what I'm trying to say. So he was actually um, coming to uh, speak for Jesus and, and his deity. So we see that Jesus had a way of bringing people to him and the Lord has a way of using him. And that's, that's Joel. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, that's uh, John 7, uh, 7, 50 to 52. 50 to 52. That's what I thought, but I couldn't. My book here, I got a different one. John 7, 50 to 52. What it did says, I say? This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. And then 51 says, you said no, John. 7. Huh? 7, 50, 7, chapter 7. Chapter 7. Uh -huh. Verse 50. 750? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's 50 and 50, 50 to 52. Oh, okay. There it is. Where I it was says, on 6. That's okay. It says Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he's doing? And uh, so he was coming to Jesus' aid when they were trying to come against him, saying, uh, at least giving, giving him the benefit of the doubt. To let to, uh, my watching and seeing what he has done, and that shouldn't we give him that? So we see that uh, um, Nicodemus was all in. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus was 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 putting his reputation and everything else on the line as we go into this. So we see that uh, he certainly uh, uh, defended Jesus. And that's strong evidence of the divine power afforded by God to change the heart of man. That's what I'm trying to get to. God can change the heart of people around you. He can change the heart of your family. He can change uh, some of the, uh, even some of the enemies you may have in your life. Has anybody ever gone through anything like that? Anybody have a testimony about that? We see that it's been done before. And we see it because Jesus sets the example. Amen. Mm -hmm. His divine God knows the divine purpose He has for your life. So, um, and then even the transformation, the people that uh, had a relationship with Jesus, or the people that Jesus that was drawn to Jesus, that He changed and that He trained. You saw the transformation. You saw the deity in Him. You saw that God, the God uh, incarnate God in uh, Jesus. Who did the you know the the, the being born again the change mm -hmm. in man? So how does that work in our lives today? Are there any parallels that we can draw from this, or that we should draw from this in our lives as Christians and the church today? Anything that you can look at and say, well, uh, if God did this in Jesus, what should He be doing in us? You mean as far as the transformation, being mm -hmm. born again? Being well, what he did with uh, this relationship with Jesus and Nicodemus um, in the church today? Do we see how? Oh, well, of course, you all you all see that. You go, go ahead, Brother Terry. So uh, when when uh, I was at the church in San Pablo. And we had a, the ministry to the homeless. Uh, you, you, a lot of you know my testimony. That in that in that neighborhood that uh, I was doing that ministry at that church, uh, many of the people that that came were people that that I uh, that I did my bad deeds with, uh, party with, and different things. And I know for a fact that there were several of them that were drawn in and they came because of the change in me. And, and I know for sure, at least one of them was transformed. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think maybe you all are being, uh, not thinking back in your, in your walks in Christ, but if you're a born again, believer, you are walking with the Lord, somebody has been affected by your walk, um, because it happened to me. And it happened long before I was a pastor. It happened when I was changed and converted one night with the Lord. 
And the next week, I saw a police officer who I knew. I think she's retired now. And she walked by my office. She didn't say anything. I, I didn't say a word to her. She just took, walked by my office and she looked at me and she put her hand over her mouth and she started crying. She broke down crying. And I said, don't worry, I'm okay. Because I had shaved my head. I, mean, I thought maybe she thought I was sick or something. <laughs> you know, but you know I shave my head once in a while to get some air. And she said, that's not it. She said, that's not what I'm crying about. You're not the same. That's what she said. She said, you're not the same. She said, I could tell by looking at you. You're not Sergeant Jones. What happened? What happened? And she kept saying what happened. So we had to close the door and talk. And I told her that I was saved. And she broke down at my desk crying. Because that's what she saw. You see? And then uh, the, the other sergeant who worked with me, when I, when I stood on a principal, he said, if Joel, if, if, if the Lord, because people were saying, well, how could the Lord change this man like that? And they were debating behind my back. And when he said it, he said, well, if the Lord did this with Joel Jones, then I have to go with him and I have to change my life. That's what he said. Now, he, he, he and, and I think he may have been close to the Lord, but now he's on our publications and he follows us on, on it's been years. Never been to a service, never had to. But that's what I mean, how God will use something in you and others will see it. Now, I saw a hand up. Sister Alma, your hand was up. I remember there was a, non, there was a lot of non-believers where I used to work at at one point. And this one uh, girl, I kept ministering to her about Jesus, about Jesus. She came in one day with pain on her back. And she says, Alma, could you just rub me? Because I know, I know you got the Lord in you. Mm. And I started rubbing her and, and she said, oh my gosh, you have revealed so much of my pain. Mm. And when I stopped, she said, I mean, you have healing hands. Praise I said, God. it's not me. It's Praise the God. Lord. Praise God. It's the Lord and Give you him believe. The glory. Amen. You know? Amen. So yes, the Lord will use you when he mm -hmm. is right there with you all the time. He, he wants to, he'll use you. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I don't know, I don't understand why people don't see it because as Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And don't marvel at it because it's just like the wind blowing where it wishes. You mm -hmm. you hear the sound, but you can't tell where it's coming from. Well, that's how people that are born again are. That's how people who are born in Christ. That's how people are who have spent time with Jesus, who have, Jesus has poured out, the Holy Spirit has poured out, His Spirit has reborn them, has born, they have a new birth. They don't act the same, uh, and they don't, sometimes they don't even look the same. Because one night, I mean, with, with spending time with the Lord, and that's when our, our son had, I, actually our daughter and son, they both, the Lord, I think, kicked them both out the house for us to spend time with the Lord, just attention one on one with Jesus but one day one day we walked out out the room with after spending time with the Lord and this was in the beginning and he says you all look different he didn't know what we were in there. he says something something is different about you you look younger or something he couldn't put a finger on it but we had spent time with Jesus it's being new creatures in Christ friends see it people see it if you're in prison or wherever you are People really see when you've had a born again experience, and it's not born again in one day and then you're back to being the person you you are. But it's truly being born again in Christ. Mm. Sister Danielle, uh, Sister Jeanette says, "Born again spiritually by the Holy Spirit only comes from heaven above." Amen. Amen. <clears throat> it's a uh, it's, it's what we get when we sign on with Jesus, right? Go ahead, uh, uh, Sister uh, Liz, then Minister Dora. You know, again, it's, 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 it's that difference between religion and relationship. Amen. I Amen. mean, people Good go to church for years and years and years, but that yes. doesn't mean that they have a relationship. Absolutely. Good point. Minister Dora? I was thinking back to the first time I went home for a family event after uh, the Lord has changed my life and I did things differently than I used to do before and I didn't participate in certain things and allow my kids to do certain things while we were there 
but I left before the rest of the family and my twin called me later and told me that my older sister was talking about me and referring to me as holier than thou <laughs> because I had changed. But my twin uh, uh, told me that she told her no, she's for real. Mm-hmm. You know, she she's mm-hmm. changed and she's uh, doing what she's, she's practicing what she believes in because she's changed. She's not the same. So uh, eventually, all of my siblings came to the Lord, but mm. but the fact that I really loved my older sister and respected her, but that really kind of pricked me when my twin told me what she said about me. Amen. Yeah, one of the ways that, that people, uh, if you're around people that, that do a lot of cursing and profanity, and when you come to the Lord, and sooner or later, they might curse around you a couple of times, they'll let one slip. And depending on how you look at them, and then something just convicts them and they go, I'm sorry. And then later on down the line, a few months later, they stop cursing around you all together, you know, and you haven't told them, you haven't pointed your finger at them. It's just something they see in you. And uh, um, see, God can do those things through vessels, through his vessels. So we know if, and what I'm getting at is, if he did this with Jesus, uh, with Jesus and Nicodemus, uh, uh, should we expect that in our lives? If yes. somebody asked you that and said, "Does he work like that with all people?" What would you say? Yes. Yes, maybe. You say, "Yeah, right." Now, what scripture would you give to bag it up? Anything off the top of your head, I see everybody's eyes going I'm to paperwork. I'm a new paperwork. creation in Christ. So. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I don't remember the okay. address, okay. but that's okay. it. All right. You're a new creature in Christ. You don't have to know where it is. You can look that up later. But each one of us should have Second something that, that we believe in us that happens. But we can say... She okay. She she looked it up now, but she had it coming out of her mouth. I just didn't know I'm a new address. creature because she had just said that second second Corinthians five seventeen. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Somebody give me another one. I don't have the scripture, but okay. I know that when people have said things to me, uh, I have always said God is able. God he is created able. It. He can do anything okay. he wants. Don't put, put him in a box. Amen. And I just go on and on, and then I say, Lord, help me, help me, help okay, me. So and that, something always comes. Okay, so so that would be somewhere around Philippians 4.13. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me, right? He gives me the power. Okay, so that's another one. Okay, we'll take that. Brother Terry? Romans 12 and 2. No longer mm-hmm. be conformed to the world. Right. Do not be, be transformed by the renewal of our mind. He renews your mind. Amen. That's why he'll do it to you. He doesn't hold back from anybody. He renews all the minds of all those who are his. Right, Mr. Doris, is your hand up? Uh, Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. We are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works, right? Which the Lord has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He's already paved the way for, for us. Amen. How about uh, uh, somebody else? Anybody else got one? No. Uh, how about uh, uh, what did Peter say that I perceive about God? You don't have to know where it is. What did he say? I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to hang my hat on that. What he does for Terry, he'll do for me. What he does for Liz, he did for Audrey. What's what he did for Alma, uh, 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 I think that's in Acts 10. 10. 10, 34 maybe, somewhere around there. But uh, these are all things that we know. You all know them. You know how I know you know them? Because we've been preaching on it for years. And you all have, have said it, and I've heard you say it. But when we're called to task, we want that thing in us, right? Mm-hmm. It's got, see, we got to make that transition. And that's the only reason I said that and did it, because the church has to walk in the power of the Lord. Sister Rods put on her uh, prayer list tonight that one day we might not have the Bible to draw from. Well, that Bible, that word better be in us. It better be in us that we believe in it. And, and don't get me wrong, there are some things that's gonna, that's gonna, uh, that we have to work on. We just have to work on it. We have to work on it. We're not where we, Paul said, I'm pressing toward the goal. There's going to be some things that every time you try to step forward, it's going to knock you back. Mm-hmm. Okay? There's going to be some things that you're going to have to apologize and repent for because it's going to knock you back. Okay? Mm-hmm. But if you keep going and just like uh, uh, 
just like training and working out, your muscles get stronger when you when you work. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you got to work this thing spiritually to get stronger in it. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Pastor. There has never been a time where sometimes you wonder, okay, the Lord said pray for this person, pray for that person. I guarantee you, every time you pray, if you if we meditate on God's word and we pray, Lord, hide your word in our hearts so that we won't sin against you. Lord, put your word in my mouth. It's the Holy Spirit Spirit's job. He brings it to your remembrance. That's why the Lord said, when you open your mouth, it's going to come out. But it takes spending time with the Lord, and, and it takes uh, it takes being in a fellow. It takes being in a relationship with the Lord, and the Lord. Jesus said, I'll be with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So here's the thing. Here's Nicodemus talking to Jesus. And anybody you know that anybody that talked to Jesus, they just wanted to sit at his feet and just listen to Jesus. And that's why when you hear men of God, women of God, people of God, God is in them. It's like no matter what they're going through, they want to hear. If they don't personally know God, they'll know God through you. They know God through when you open your mouth. They'll hear God. They'll see, they'll see God in you, and they'll want to hear, and they'll taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's why when you're around people or when you're in a hospital or when you're ministering to people, it's not you that they're looking at. It's God in you that's speaking through you. And that's what Nicodemus was doing. He wanted to spend time with God. People want to spend time with godly people. Minister Dora and I was on the phone, and we can talk about hours about God, about Jesus. And so this is how Nicodemus wanted to know. God, Nick, Jesus had this wisdom, and that's what God gives us. He gives us wisdom, and he gives us a spiritual wisdom that just pours out of you when you spend time because it's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, again... Uh it's not, I keep saying it's not rocket science. This, this word, yeah, there's some things about God that's mysterious and the, mis, uh, the mystery of, God, of godliness that we talk about, that he was manifested in the flesh, uh, uh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, uh, believed on in the world and received up in glory. There are some mysterious things about God, but there are some things that are right there on the face of it that we, that we can gather and we can live our lives concentrating on those things and, and you're gonna get through a lot of this. And that's one of the things that you can tell people, oh yeah, I expect that to be done in my life. How about, uh, uh, somebody mentioned that the other day, what's the Great Commission? Go out into all the nations, baptize in the name right. of God, Son, Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, and 19. Show them what I have to, and tell right. them what I have command command them to do what I have commanded there, you to do. Go therefore and make disciples. Matter of fact, that's the same thing that's in Mark. Here we go. There's Mark. Y'all wanted Mark? Doesn't it say it in Mark 16, 15? It says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Same thing, right? Same context, same thing. You, so, so the Lord teaches us these things. We got them right there, but we have to get them from the head to the heart. And just know that it's there. Amen. And you know what? Everywhere Jesus went, he, he drew a, a crowd just like the disciples. Because again, that wisdom, that heavenly, that heavenly language. Now the devil is going to do the same thing. The devil is going to draw a crowd for a different reason and a different way. And that's why you see the false prophets drawing their crowd. But then those who are coming to 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 the Lord through through you when you're draw, drawing them, they really, really, really want to hear the word. They really, really, really want to hear the truth. But there are people who will not even want to talk to you, not even want to see you coming because that word, you're too much light. You're too much light for them and they don't even want to, they don't want to hear the truth. But those who really want to be, want to hear the truth, those who are really hurting, God is going to bring them to you. And then if you don't open up, if you don't say anything, that's why we as lights, God sent us out to our families. God sent us out to our communities. God sent us out to the laundromats, to the, the grocery stores, to the uh, health clubs. God send you to places. God will just, just have you sitting at home and he'll help someone call you. And then they you will minister to them or you will talk to them. But it will really be God speaking to you. Be God speaking through you. 
but he'll be speaking and he'll be, he'll be speaking through you. All right. Anybody else? Sister Liz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was going to say, the, you know, and the, the, the beautiful thing of it is also, just like Jesus did with Nicodemus, he does with us too. If we, if we spend time, come to him, spend time in his word, he will, he will teach us. Amen. He teaches, he'll teach us. Amen. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't push Nicodemus away. No. You should know this. Get no. out of my face. Exactly. No, he explained it. Exactly. He and, said, he tells us to seek in the psalm. He says, seek me as a deer pants full of water, bro. Seek me with all your heart, and you'll find me. Yeah. And, and I think what we do in the church is sometimes we even take things for granted, or we've been uh, in churches, I should say, no church in particular, just, just Christians in general. Somehow we've been a little lax about some things. Maybe it's the country we live in. Maybe if we lived over there in, in those war-torn countries where you can't... Uh, uh, worship and you have to worship behind blacked out windows and everything like that. Uh, maybe we have more of a uh, an urgency to get these things under our belt because you got to live it. You know, you may be in a position that you have to stand on that word, and so you can't afford to look for it. It's got to be in you. It's got to come out. And uh, I, I say to this day, that's the only reason the Lord let me spend almost 40 years in training, in, in fighting, because it has to come out. If you got to think about which punch to throw or which, when to fire, you're a dead man walking. You got to respond, and it better be. A, you see fights on TV that last 15 minutes, and they're fighting and they're knocking each other down, not where I come from. It better be over in three seconds. Three seconds, one to eight people attack you, you should be able to take out five of them. And that means you got to work. Well, he didn't teach me that to fight. He taught me that not to fight. Now I know that the Holy Spirit can do the fighting for me. Okay? and But it takes the same type of work spiritually. That's what I'm trying to say. And it takes spending understand. time with the Lord. And you know, God has given us this word, and in his word, he's talking to us in his word. But then but even if you put the word up, God, you have to know when God is talking to you in your heart. You know he's talking to you because it's lining up with his word. But you have to know your father. And like Pastor Joel said, when we're in the world, he, he was teaching him to fight and he was teaching him uh, the, the things that you need to do to be a good fighter or to be a good athlete or to be a good teacher, a good mother. But now God has you in your word to be, if you're born in the spirit, then you have to know those things of the spirit. And if you don't know the things of the spirit, you're going to get tested every day. And you're going to get tested, tested, tested. And my daughter asked me today, did, did you get a D on it? I said, she, she was laughing because when I started, said that we have to be tested, she acted like she had never heard that before. I'm like, oh God, that's good. You're allowing me to teach her that we are tested. We're going to go through something and we will be tested and the, for the spiritual things so that we can have that mind like Christ. Sister Karen, I'm sorry. I saw your hand up. Go ahead. Well, I memorized those scriptures like of salvation, you know what I mean? The Bible said, but as many to receive him, to them give him the, the right to become child of God. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just love knowing God's word, but I like to teach the kids. Mm -hmm. But I don't have my little Bible. I used to have these little Bible tracts called mm -hmm. Smile, Jesus Loves You, and it's got the whole word. And I pass them out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get some so I can pass them out. I will pass out the word of God Amen. to the children. Amen. And, and this is important. These, these are teaching points. These are teaching points because we want to be able to uh, to apply. And, and really, that's what it's about, you all. Uh, if I ask you why, you, if we're in a building, I said, why do you go to church? Why do you come here? Do you come here to hear your favorite song? Do you come here because... You like the camaraderie. Do you come here to hear the word? What else? Is there anything else? It's got to be something else. You come to be transformed. Mm -hmm. you, you come to get this not just head knowledge, but heart knowledge. And that takes work. Mm -hmm. Takes some work. You know, I don't care how much scripture you know. I don't care 
you know, where you've been. I don't, I don't care how, who, who, if you're a teacher, preacher, or just a reacher. You better be able to use this. And, and we need to get to, otherwise we're fooling somebody. If, we, if, we, if it doesn't come out when you need it, what good is it? What good is just having knowledge? No, it's more to it than that. And people ought to be affected by it. You need to be, we need to be able to stand on it. We need to be able to affect others. We need to be able to walk in it when we don't feel like walking. Okay? We need to be able to, to give a word. We need to be able to uh, 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 represent the Lord. So, go ahead, Sister, Sister Karen. And I give the word out like on Facebook, and if I don't, and I don't give it up, people get in my family because they don't always see. I'm they don't always give the word, so sometimes I'm the only one who can give them the word. They don't read it, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't read the Bible, so we are the Bible. Amen. You know, and we live. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, uh, as we're going through these scriptures, understand what God is doing. We're going through this Bible, and we're going to continue to go through it as long as we have Bibles. I don't care if you're looking at an I, uh, a computer, an iPad, or a uh, e-book, or an old raggedy Bible. Whatever you're going through, we're going to continue to go through these things till the Lord calls us home because we need to go over it and over it and over it. So, so when we do, you know that the Lord is going to tell you what to do. And if you miss it, or, or, he, or you move ahead, or you go back, you know you're going to hit that point again, right? And it should be in you anyway, okay? So sometimes we have to challenge ourselves because the Lord is going to test us all. Daily. Whatever you're good at, whatever you think you got covered, he's going to hit you at a time when, huh, when you're not ready. When some, yeah, something happened to me today, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you, you can fight so much till catch you wrong and the first thing you do is put your dukes up mm -hmm. and it's like the Lord says foul mm -hmm. <laughs> you've been penalized 15 yards that happened to me today mm -hmm. happened to me today I had to repent I had to repent I don't like it when people come beating on my door I just don't like it you know I, I get upset when people ring the doorbell and then they ring it and then they act like because you didn't come fast enough I mean beating on the door. Oh man. The level went up. Pastor Aunt Lisa was trying to access the 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 thing from uh what's that thing called? Xfinity doorbell. The, the thing, the doorbell thing where you can talk through the door. You know the Lord wasn't gonna let that work. She couldn't access it fast enough. In the meantime, the guy's beating on the door, beating on the did door. It a couple of times. And did it again. Bah, 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 bah. Like, like, the, like it's the police. I'm the police. So I, I go to the door. And man, we can't even talk now. You know? And what, made, what the devil did was he, he sent a big guy. He sent a big guy. And the first thing I did was say, is that the way you knock on somebody's door? Is that the way? Is that the... Who are you? What's your business? And the more I talk, you know, the matter I got. But what's your business? You know, and uh, and that one didn't. That one didn't get prayed over. And, and I was hissing at that time, and uh, <laughs> uh, it, it it wasn't it wasn't pretty. And and uh, and by the time I realized that that uh, oops, <laughs> it was too late. And, and uh, I think I, I think I did say. Oh, I forgot what I said. No, you know but what anyway. you did. Just like a little boy that's been caught with candy in that candy in the hand in the candy jar, he went and laid down on the bed and he was like, <laughs> like a little puppy, like what a little puppy does when they've been trouble. And and that's what I mean by getting it from here to here. And I'm the first to tell you, you know, that that uh, I had to repent and. Uh, and the Lord was grieved, and I grieved the Lord, you know. And uh, But you know and, when a test is coming because the Lord will talk about it. Okay, can I finish? Yeah. Thank you. And I said, so uh, um, 
the things you we're good at or the things that we're uh, uh, got in hand, there's going to be something else that you don't. Forty years of training and recognizing, you know, bullies, that's in me deep. So I have to really put that thing down. And, and even in the face of it, because the guy was very, really, 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 the devil sent somebody who was really, and, and in our neighborhood, they, they've got a neighborhood watch for a guy who's been harassing older people. He's been harassing them, you know, trying to open their door when they don't come fast enough. They got the pictures of him, and I think that was the guy. So I was already, when I saw him, it was just that devil said, that's him, but he came to the wrong house this time. And so, so, but still, I'm not in the ring anymore. You came to the right house. I'm a pastor. And if I can't scale down, how do I expect anybody else to scale down? And what they're going through. You see? So that's why I say I don't separate myself from anybody. I just know we need to work in some areas. And the way to get it is to really stay in that word. And uh, so, uh, with Christ. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Sister Danielle. Uh, Sister Yolanda says we need to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Amen. Amen. James one twenty two. And all the time, not sometimes, because I always say this is not going to happen when you uh, when you're ready for it. Oh, I'm ready now, you know. But he ain't coming back, not not for a while anyway. And it's, it was but. such a huge test because just like Yolanda say, we need to be doers of the word. Okay, we're in in the word, but God will test you. Even the Lord had had talked to us uh, on our walk about just coming to him for everything and, and watching our emotions. And that devil, I, I have to say God allowed the enemy to come because that's where the test was. You're in the word or you're even talking to the Lord, but you'll still get tested. That's what I want to say. So we know that um, somebody's hand was up. No. So again, go ahead, Sister Karen. And some emotion can really get you. I've been lately getting emotion. Wait so I, I have to call on the Lord. Sometimes I get so emotion and uh yeah get in the wood, I guess. Well, there, I get tested. I don't have to eat I don't have to test. Well there um, are some there are some things like I said and if we could if, if we knew our uh uh if we knew all the factors that we could be on guard that'd be something but the Lord knows how to test us and, and when. When it comes to older people and, and babies and young people, uh, I give myself over to the Lord because I don't know what might happen in the situation because of what I've seen. I don't play on some things. So the Lord has to help me with those things. Uh, when it comes to people mistreating, taking people's lives, abusing people, um, I know my job is not to just sit quiet. I'm going to do more than pray. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, but I'm going to be moving while I'm praying. And I'm going to let the Lord take care of it because I know he can drop a person. He can do whatever he wants to do. Um, but uh, he knows where each of us are, uh, where we are. So we really have to work on those things. And it takes work. Whatever you've been doing in, in, uh, for, for most of your life, that's probably the thing that's going to uh, tell on you the most. Because it would be hard to break those habits. And the Lord know, but the Lord knows how to do it. Okay. So what we see from this, there's a scripture in Titus 2.11 that says the grace of God uh, that brings salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. In other words, his grace is sufficient and anyone that wants it can take part. That was Titus what? Titus 2.11. Uh, uh, and, and, and as we look at uh, the book of John, we'll see that this is what Jesus is talking about. Look at verse 3, because we see that uh, uh, Nicodemus, as somebody said, he knew he was close, but he didn't know some things, right? And Jesus says, most assuredly, I say to you that unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, what do you get from that? What does that mean? What does that mean? 
unless you're born again. Does that mean that, oh, say you come to church and you're in a church and, and you believe in God and uh, you, you make offerings, you pay tithes, whatever you want to say, and you go back and do your life and everything, but, but you, you don't mess with anybody and, and uh, uh, you try to do the best you can. Um, are you born again? No. Sister Alma, your hands up. You, you died to self. You died to self? Yes. Okay. What do you mean? When do you, when well, do, you do that? Well, to be born again is to come to Christ, to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Okay. How do you do that? You die to your to self. Uh, you you change your life. Uh, you're born again. You're you're a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. You follow Jesus. You you. Uh, oh gosh. You confess with your mouth. Yes. yes you believe in your heart. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Romans ten nine. Romans ten, 10 nine and ten. And then you start working on it. And the Holy Spirit comes into you, and He helps you to do it. Because you're right. You die to self. You do all of that, but can we do that by ourselves? No, we need the Holy no. Spirit. That's, that's what you miss. And, and that's why it's good to know what the Word says. And I just wanted to, since you had your hand up, I was going to let you tell us what it is. That's what I was waiting for. So, and that's what it means to, to hide this thing in our hearts where we don't just know it, but now we can apply it. And now when somebody asks you, you'll be able to say, and this is what it says in the Word. And then tell them you got to die to yourself, because they might say, "How do you know when you're dead?" <laughs> you know? So you got to tell them, right? You you can you confess with your mouth, and and you believed in your heart, and you, you you maybe you even went through baptism to show an outward show of what you believe in your heart. But that's not necessary. What you need to do is be baptized in the Holy Spirit, Amen, and believe, Brother Dave. When you look at what Nicodemus was looking, said after that, mm -hmm. that in, in, in verse 4, mm -hmm. he was looking at it from human eyes. He was not looking at it from a spiritual point of view. Now, the, the, the thing that we don't have from the point of uh, um, this, this area here is they don't talk about, they, you, they, they, you read Jesus talking and then you go on to some, another subject. And, and it doesn't talk about Nicodemus changing or turning or anything like that. And, and then when you see him talking to the Sanhedrin, uh, standing up for Jesus, he, he stood up. But he didn't take and be boldly standing up. He just kind of, uh, you know, do we... So we mm -hmm. don't really know if he changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't know if, his, if he, he took and saw Jesus in anything other than this is a good man, he had to come from God, uh, but I still don't understand, mm -hmm. and everything like that. So mm -hmm. that, there's, a, there's a, you know, the, the aspect I have about Nicodemus is, is that we don't know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he at least was inquiring, and he went, he went to the man who, 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 who was bringing this. He didn't go to Somebody, you know, somebody else, you know, what, what do you think, you know? Yeah. He, he went directly to Jesus. Amen. And, and, we, uh, and, and even with that, you know, as we know about the Bible, it doesn't tell us everything about everything. It gives us enough that we can come to our own uh, answers with the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we know in other places, and we know that uh, when you are, uh, if you seek me, Jesus will make himself available and, and he won't hold anything back and all that the Father gives him will come to him. And we know from the Ethiopian eunuch, right, that people that want to be, they're going to pursue him. And even a man who is, uh, is effeminate can walk in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if he can do that for him, he can do it for Nicodemus. So we could probably come to a plausible conclusion that somewhere along the line, Nicodemus was saved. We can come to that conclusion somewhere down the line that likely he was because he's showing more from, from the first day than some people show years down the road. You know, he's willing to stand up with Jesus. 
<laughs> go, go ahead, bro, uh, Brother Terry. You know, I've got a whole bunch of family and i got a whole bunch of friends that I wish they was halfway <laughs> that Sanhedrin is. I'm telling and, you. And, and their walk towards Christ. I'm uh, telling and, you. And, and if I have Christ in me, they can come to me and ask and you know what and they will when Jesus when when Jesus come knocking on their door when the father sends Jesus their way because Nicodemus spent time with Jesus you all spent time with Jesus that's why you're you're here you spent time with Jesus and you tasted him and you and you spent time with him and you love him and you're devoted to him so that flesh that, that Nicodemus, that Jesus is talking about, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's, that which is born of spirit is spirit. The flesh. Paul talked so much about the flesh, our desires. That's what's in that flesh. So that flesh has to be crucified, but you know when it's crucified, when those desires start leaving, those old desires that doesn't line up with the spirit. And so that's what Paul talks about and, and when Paul, when we get into uh, talking about the flesh, and that's why flesh is born to flesh, which, you, you know, what was born to your parents, that flesh, that was old desires, that what mind, mind, mind thing. But when you get into the spirit, it's the things of God that you cling to. All right. Sister Karen, go ahead. That's uh, whole, um, John 3. Um there was guys from the church went witness to my dad. He was sick. He had cancer. That that was the voice they were quoting to him. Mm -hmm. But it was really asking on his deathbed. I asked him if he wanted to accept Jesus, and my dad accepted Jesus. Oh, and you know, God. and as he was and so yeah, um, I got to let my dad. I think I remember that. Yeah. That was Brother Frank, and I can't remember. I think the other one had cancer, right? Passed away. That witness to him. Ray, Ray, yeah. Ray. Ray Romero, was it? Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Ray Romero. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, well, praise God. Well, we're at time. What we're going to do then, uh, this chapter, chapter 3, it, it, it's said to be one of the most important uh, parts of the entire gospel. Because it opens, what happened? Oh, it opens up... Uh, so many critical and crucial ideas concerning salvation uh, and Jesus as our Savior and different things like that. So we're going to stop here, but God willing, we'll continue in this same chapter next time. Um, and, uh, and then we'll go further. So, so now listen, you all. Read on through chapter 3, okay? I want to make it clear now. Just read through chapter 3 because we should have read it. We should have been on that already. And read up through chapter 7, if you can, between now and next week. Because I don't know, uh, after we finish 3, where we'll jump from from there. But we will still be in the book of John. So, of course, there are a lot of good points in here and things that, that overlap. So, we'll go from uh, just be prepared anywhere along there. But we're going to try to finish up uh, chapter 3 and then go from there, God willing, next time. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, praise God. Why does the screen keep leaving? If you have the mouse, okay. it's going to do that. So, um, to those of you who are watching and who have tuned in on YouTube, <clears throat> tuned in on uh, Facebook, uh, and you don't know the Lord, surely, 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 it's time, it's time, it's time to get to know Him. And you do that by accepting Jesus into your heart, asking Him to come, repenting of your sins. We all have something. There's a lot to work on in each one of us, and we all have to, uh, we need help. We need help from the Lord. You need a Savior. Can't get it anywhere else. Can't buy it. Uh, can't pay for it. Mm, your 401k plan, well, you see what that's worth nowadays, right? Your stocks and bonds, your uh, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, all of that, whatever the case might be, you need the Lord. Okay, he's only real, uh, really the only real estate that's out there is an estate with Jesus. Amen. So we need to get him into our lives now. And if you haven't accepted him, I'm telling you the time is running out. Ask him into your heart today. I'd like to pray for you. If you believe in Jesus and you ask him into your heart and believe that he is God, you will be saved. 
You just have to repent your sins and do those things. Pray this prayer with me now and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I repent to you right now. I believe that you are God. You died for us and you were raised on the third day. God raised you from the dead. Would you come into my life and be my Savior? I will give my life over to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in faith, man, sister, you are now a child of God. Be happy, be glad, because now you have blessed assurance that being saved, when you leave here, if your name is called tonight um, to leave this earth, you'll be in heaven with the Lord. And that's a blessing. But he doesn't save you just to bring you up. He saves you so that you can do some more work here for him. And that means others will come through you, maybe your children, maybe that friend of yours down the street, maybe somebody in your life who was like me, who was caught up in a false religion. Somebody needs to know about Jesus, and guess what? You are now going to be made into an ambassador for Christ, as we talk about in 2 Corinthians 5.20. We are ambassadors for Christ. So he's going to use you to touch somebody else's life as he gets you ready, as he cleans you up. Amen? That's how the Lord does it. He doesn't just do one thing. He's going to do a lot of things through you. So get yourself a Bible. Start going to a Bible-based church. Study that word. Let the Holy Spirit guide you, lead you, and you'll be just fine. Amen? By and by, the Lord will get, get you to where you need to be. Just stay with it. Amen? Okay, so we're going to pray out, and I'll let you all have your evening. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this class. I thank you for everyone that joined us, Lord. ask you to bless us as we leave here, Lord God. Keep everyone, Lord. I thank you for bringing Brother Larry and Sister Elwanda and others, Lord God. Julius. Everyone, uh, Brother Julius and those that, Lord, who I, who I can't uh, see their names, but I know they're somewhere uh, on, on one of the uh, social medias, Lord. So bless us, Lord, as we leave here. And, of course, our faithful uh, uh, Zoom crew. Lord, for a spirit of truth who are, are so dutiful, Lord, I'm asking you to bless each one of them. Lord, bless their health, bless their finances, bless their lives, bless their relationships, bless their children, bless their grandchildren, bless their great-grandchildren, Lord. Keep us all covered, Lord, until you bring us home. We thank you, Lord, to you who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly greater than anything we could ever ask or imagine according to the power working through us, which is you. We thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Keep us. Amen. 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 God bless you, saints. Hope to see you all again next time, God willing. Amen. Have a good night in the Lord.